We're about to test one of the greatest cars in the world. On a track, its acceleration is seemingly endless. The engine management system is more sophisticated than any PC. It's a four-door saloon that does 200 miles an hour. It has a spec that reads like a Formula One car, complete with a V10 engine and a seven-speed gearbox. It's yours for £62,000. This is BMW's mighty M5. We were cruising south on Route National 138, which eventually becomes the Mulsanne Strait of Le Mans. Perfect time to start experimenting with the 5 litre V10 engine. The moment we're in relaxed about town mode with only 400 horsepower. But if we just press this little button and we go from 400 horsepower to 507 and the whole engine tone just comes alive. The amazing thing is that this 507 horsepower doesn't actually feel that ferocious. They just feel this never-ending, oh, glorious surge without any real violence involved. It's one of the all-time great engines, and to help you keep it in the sweet spot, they've squeezed seven ratios into the gearbox. There is a fully automatic mode, but I prefer shifting manually with the paddles. You also get to choose the actual speed of the changes by selecting one of six modes. Having driven the car for somewhat 100 miles or so and played with all these different gear changes, I'm beginning to realise that although mode one, the slowest change, might give your passengers' necks a slightly easier time, you can actually make even smoother changes in mode six, the fastest change, just by giving a little lift of the throttle. Let me just demonstrate. Select third gear, build up the revs, up, lift, woof, through it goes. Didn't notice that at all. Crew, hey, look, I want you to listen to the engine start up. It's a bit bizarre for all the beautiful sounds of yesterday because actually on tick over, it can sound a bit rough. Time to go. Pack the camera away. Come on, let's get on the road. Considering that a Ferrari 575 has just seven extra horsepower and yet costs nearly a hundred grand more, the £62,000 M5 is a bit of a bargain, which makes it even more enjoyable. So it was up the road to sister track Po Arnaud for the final part of our test. Now at the end of this pit straight, there's an amazing blind right there. You're only getting up to fourth gear. You just clip the one curve and it just throws you to the left one. And the bottom of two right-handers, which, if you want a fun, can be taken as one. <laughs> Undersee there at high speed, oh, with a snap of oversee at the end. Oh, it's a hell of a track. Down the second, to the left, right. Ooh, silly bit, silly bit, silly bit. One way, then four, the other way. Oh, it's clear on the way out. Oh, my, oh. I think you could get a bit carried away. You have to remember, the M5 is a big, heavy car. You've got to have a little bit of respect. That weight just throws the front out, and then of course when you're braking, you need long braking distances. You just need a bit more room. The car's slightly lazier in its reactions. The amazing thing is the brakes are holding up brilliantly for such a tight circuit. One more. Flick it. Power. Now on the throttle then. Oh, backs out. Catch it on the throttle. Bit more throttle. No, lift off the throttle as we dive into the corner. got a 
to remember, I've driven this car up. Concentrate, Tim. You've got to remember, I've driven this car all the way from England with all our luggage and the camera kit. And now I'm doing this to it. Oh, what a car! Beating, that's for sure. Unfortunately, the waiting list is such that if you ordered one today, it wouldn't arrive until mid 2007. However, join us in a moment and we'll show you a way of getting an M5 fix a bit quicker with our latest fifth gear competition.